Cooking. I'm your hostess, Cindy Schumacher. On today's show, we'll be making cheesy cracked chicken casserole, stone fruit salad with toasted almonds, Swiss onion bread ring, and cookie dough brownies. So we're gonna start with the brownies because we need to let the first layer cool. I have a fudge brownie uh, mix right here. To that, I'm going to add a half cup of oil, a half cup of water, one large egg, and then I'm going to beat that get it all incorporated before I start my strokes okay 50 strokes Pour in a half cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Then I'm going to spread that in a, a pan that is greased on the bottom only. I've got my oven preheated to 350. And we're going to bake that for about 33 to 35 minutes. You never want to over bake brownies. So watch your, set your timer and, uh, and we'll get it going. Okay. That was quick. We're already going to take a break while I run out and put this in the in the oven. I'll be right back. Internet is here. Valley now has higher broadband speeds of up to one gigabit. Get the bandwidth you need for all your devices at one time. Gaming with no lag time. Video stream your favorite movies instantly in HD quality. Video chat with friends and family without interruption. Download your favorite music and photos in seconds. All on our 100% fiber optics network. Valley offers managed Wi-Fi and backup services too. Bringing together all the services you need. Valley Telecommunications Cooperative. Okay, I got working on the, on the casserole right away. Um, what I did was you take 12 strips of bacon and I, I browned those in the skillet and then I pulled those out. I left two tablespoons of grease in there. I have one and a half to two pounds of chicken. Actually, this is like one and three quarters of a pound. You're supposed to use anywhere from one and a half to two pounds of chicken. I use chicken breast. You can use thighs or whatever kind of, of meat that you want. Um, so to this, I'm gonna season with salt and pepper. About a half teaspoon of, of pepper. I should have these hooked to my waist. About a half teaspoon of salt. Normally you would use more salt than pepper, but because we're frying it in the bacon grease, that's going to add some of the salt to it. So we have paprika, a half teaspoon. As soon as your chicken is no longer pink, then we'll add our vegetables to it. It goes really quite quickly. It's, and if you wanted to actually, you could cook your chicken in advance, you could cook your bacon in advance to save some time. I actually freeze bacon grease in little, uh, like two tablespoon packets and I'll use it for different things, sauteing vegetables sometimes for soups or a casserole or something. It saves you money on buying butter and or oil and it gives you flavor. Um, fish is always good fried in bacon grease.
Need a little garlic. Looks good. I'm going to transfer that. To this I'm going to add a, a green bell pepper that's finely diced and a medium onion diced. I'm using a Vidalia. They just happen to be cheaper than regular yellow onions in the store and so I thought um, I would do that. And then to this I'm going to also add two tablespoons of garlic. If that's a little bit much for you, just cut down. Um, whatever. And we want to cook these for a few minutes just until they get tender. If you want a copy of any of the recipes that we're making on today's show, if you don't have internet, give the girls at Valley a call. They'll be happy to help you with a recipe. If you do have internet, go to the Valley homepage, www.valleytel.net. Click on the Country Cooking Cow and you'll find all the recipes there. We'll take a little break while we're waiting for this to tender up. We'll be right back. Valley is now offering updated digital TV packages and prices. Call Valley today at 437-2615. I'm going to transfer these uh, out of there. This will help save you some dishes. I'm going to add three tablespoons of butter. All right here. It's all melted, then we're going to stir in a fourth cup of flour.
This is a nylon flat whisk, which is really nice for making your roux or whatever, you know, where you are incorporating your fat with your flour. I think I actually got it free with a skillet that I bought once, but it comes in handy. Okay, I'm going to stir in three cups of milk. Let that start to cook. I'm going to add a packet of ranch dressing mix. A can of cream of chicken soup. And as soon as you get that all incorporated, we're going to stir in an, an eight ounce of cream cheese. This is kind of like a, a mac and cheese type of a, a dish. But it has, it's a little different because you're using the cream cheese. I'm going to add the cheddar cheese in just a minute once the cream cheese starts to melt down because the cheddar cheese melts much more quickly because it's grated. In the meantime, I started working on the, uh, the bread. So I have a bundt pan that I have greased well. I'm going to put about a half teaspoon of poppy seed in the bottom. And then uh, the dough uh, calls for two tubes of refrigerated French bread dough. They're 11 ounces each. They did not have it in our store. You can use Rhodes frozen bread dough. You can use your own homemade dough or however you want to do it. I made my own um, and I gave you the recipe if you call in and you want my recipe, but it's just as easy if you want to use Rhodes frozen dough or something like that to make it quick and easy. Go ahead and do that. So you cut the dough into 40 pieces and you put half of them in the bottom. So Meantime, I'm going to get back to this. We're multitasking today. Okay, and I'm also going to add two and a half cups of grated cheddar cheese. Now, the, the original recipe when I found it calls for a little more cheese than that, and it really is plenty cheesy, so I have cut down on the cheese. Um, and that's one thing I always tell you to do. If you make something sometime and, and it's not exactly to your liking, go ahead and 
there's there's no rules that say you can't make a recipe your own. So, and that's probably what I do to 99% of the recipes that I make. I just kind of adjust them to uh, our tastes or, you know. So. Use this so I can see what I'm putting in here. I grate my own cheese. I just think it tastes better. Sometimes the, the pre-grated cheeses taste a little powdery because they put the instant mashed potatoes in there to keep them from clumping. So I just think that when I grade my own, I, it just has a better flavor. Good. So I'm going to grab a spatula. We're going to just put it all in the same dish here, the same bowl. cups of macaroni that um, and I use the you know this size I'm gonna toss that in mix it all together We're going to top it with uh, the other half cup of cheddar cheese. The, the 12 strips of bacon, bacon that I fried up. And then about a fourth cup of, of breadcrumbs. Um, if you want, it calls for crispy breadcrumbs. What I do sometimes is, is toast bread and then I put it in the blender and then I just freeze them so that they're always ready whenever I need them. Okay, we're gonna pop this in the oven at 350 for about 20 to 30 minutes. Be right back. We're assembling the rolls. I've divided the dough into into 40 pieces, so I've got half of them in there. I had sprinkled about a half teaspoon of poppy seeds. So I've got a cup of grated Swiss cheese. I'm gonna put half of that over the top of this first layer. 
And I have three-fourths of a cup of chopped green onions. I'm gonna use half of those again here. And I have six tablespoons of butter melted. I'm gonna drizzle about half of that over this. And then a teaspoon of poppy seed. And then we're gonna repeat the layers. It's as easy as that. And here we go. So uh, this time though, I'm gonna put the, the poppy seed on first, teaspoon. Half cup of Swiss cheese. The rest of the green onions. And then the rest of the butter. Okay, since I've let the, do the dough has been raising and, and we kind of put it in real carefully, so we're gonna go ahead and, and pop this in the oven. It's gonna bake for about 30 to 35 minutes at 375. I'm gonna pop it in, we'll be right back. At Valley Telecommunications, we pride ourselves in providing the home team advantage. But what does that mean? It means going above and beyond to take care of our customers' needs by providing exceptional customer service. Because helping you helps all of us. As a cooperative, each time you subscribe to our services, you are investing in our community, which allows all of us to build and benefit from the newest technologies. Make the switch today to Valley Telecommunications and experience the home team advantage. Okay, hey, we're going to make the balsamic vinaigrette. I have a fourth cup of balsamic vinegar. To that, I'm going to add uh, some finely chopped green onions, two tablespoons, and three and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I'm actually going to measure it out here before I put it in so that I can whisk it as, as we're adding it so it emulsifies. So you just pour it in really slowly and whisk the whole time you're doing it. Well, this time of the year, fruit is generally nice and sweet and, and ripe, so you, uh, so you don't need a lot of sugar in your dressing. I've got eight cups of, of romaine here. If you have mixed greens or if you'd rather use spinach or a combination of anything, uh, it, it's all going to taste good with this. And the salad is, is as much fruit as it is greens. So it's it's a nice refreshing salad. It goes well with something like a casserole. So for the fruit, I have uh, three plums that I have. It says to peel them. I actually like the peelings on. I think it, it just makes it prettier. And uh, they always say that the the vitamins and the good things are in the peelings. I have uh, two nectarines. Two peaches. And three-fourths of a cup of red cherries that I have pitted and halved. And then two ounces of uh, goat cheese. I'm using feta. And 
about that for a beautiful summer, late summer salad. It's got all kinds of color, it's got all kinds of flavor. And then uh, we're actually going to toss the dressing on it right before we serve it. I'm gonna take a quick break and clean up, we'll be right back. Here, Valley now has higher broadband speeds of up to one gigabit. Get the bandwidth you need for all your devices at one time. Gaming with no lag time. Video stream your favorite movies instantly in HD quality. Video chat with friends and family without interruption. Download your favorite music and photos in seconds. All on our 100% fiber optics network. Valley offers managed Wi-Fi and backup services too. Bringing together all the services you need. Valley Telecommunications Cooperative. I forgot to add the fourth cup of toasted slivered almonds. I, you can you can slowly toast them in your oven on a low grade oven like 250 or something like that it takes about 15 minutes or I like to put mine in a skillet with just a little bit of butter and they they get nice and toasty like that so we're gonna sprinkle those on the salad now we're going to work on the cookie dough part of the cookie dough brownies I have uh, a half cup of butter that I have softened in here. To that I'm going to add a half cup of firmly packed brown sugar, a fourth cup of white sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, I usually don't let you see my tub of flour. <laughs> but we need a, a cup of flour. In my defense, actually, it holds a whole 10 pound bag of flour. <laughs> spread this over the brownies without ripping them up so I I always kind of do the crumble thing you know like this <laughs> remember uh, as I always tell you if you want a copy of any of these recipes and I hope you do because they are all tried and true recipes and I could tell you a story about these brownies as we had some company and I had just a couple left over and they were kind of hidden over on the counter and and this young man that's uh, Gonna be a senior in high school spotted them and, and polished them off so uh, anybody that likes brownies and and likes cookie dough will like these brownies You want to totally, entirely cover the brown part of the brownies, so. 
try to distribute this pretty evenly so that it's easier for you to cover it. And you don't have to worry, since there's no raw eggs in this, in the cookie dough part of it, then you don't have to worry about anything like that. But if you want a copy of any of these recipes, if you don't have internet, remember you can call the girls at Valley, they'll be happy to help you out. And if you do have internet, you just go to the Valley Home, Valley Home page, www.valleytel.net, click on the Country Cook and Cow and you'll find the recipes there. Takes a little time, but eventually you'll get it all covered. In the meantime, then I took a cup of semi sweet chocolate chips and I um, added a tablespoon of butter and melted that on the stove. So that's sitting here waiting to be the glaze on top of this. Just about there. Okay, so it looks like this. Now I'm going to spread the glaze on top. Okay, now it's it is optional, but if you if you would like, you can sprinkle the top with walnuts. It calls for three fourths of a cup to a cup of walnuts. I've got about a half cup here, and because I think it is plenty, as you'll see once I get done. like that. I'm going to take a quick break, clean up, we'll be right back. We're going to get dishing here. I've tossed the salad. Some of the different colors here.
pull some of the bread apart. As usual, normally you would want to wait until everything sets up just a little bit. The brownies are a little bit soft, but it should still be fine. And there we have it. We've got our cheesy cracked chicken casserole our stone fruit salad with the toasted almonds, our Swiss onion bread ring, and our cookie dough brownies. Thanks for joining us today on this edition of Country Cook, and we hope to see you next time.